Oh, hi, it's Rob, and I'm in the kitchen tonight because I got a special little treat. Uh, got a range down in the kitchen that's acting up a little bit. So yeah, this is the right front burner, and the right front burner is, as you can see, not working. And if I go over here to the power indicator, it doesn't even show that there's power getting to it. So there is definitely an electrical problem somewhere in between the control, the burner, and the control unit that's in there. So I really don't know how to show this. Uh, the oven doesn't heat properly. I can, if I set it to 350 degrees, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to reach the preheat temperature, and then it'll finally cook at 350 with a baking. Uh, if I try to cook a pizza at, you know, like 425 to 450, it never gets there. It, it doesn't bump up above 350. So there's something wrong. I'm guessing it's a thermal sensor unit, but I'll take a look at it. All right, so... Here's the thing. Mom has been paying for uh, an appliance protection plan for quite some time. It's really expensive. It's almost like 40 bucks a month. Uh, when I found this out, I decided, okay, I'll have someone come out here and fix the stove. The technician looked at the stove for a while, said, no, I can't see anything wrong with the oven and I have to order a part. He said he was ordering, there's a transformer in between the switch and the burner. And I thought that was kind of weird. Because I don't see any reason that there's supposed to be a transformer in there. And there's no transformer in there. It's not a thing. Now, he came out the day before Thanksgiving. So I'm guessing that he just wanted to boot, scoot, and boogie out of here. But, I don't know. So, um, <clears throat> I contacted the company. Turns out it's the gas company. Uh, and in order to check on the status of this order, I had to send them power of attorney <laughs> to let them know that I can access the account. So yeah, doing that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to try and diagnose this and see if I can figure out what the problem is or problems are. Uh, so I'm going to give it a shot. And then I'm going to have someone come out and diagnose it and fix it because it's already paid for. But I would really like to uh, catch these guys in the midst of doing some shenanigans. Step number one, unplug it from the outlet. 240 volts is nothing to sneeze at. That will take you down. Piper says so too. She's being very healthy. Yes. Isis is over there laying down. All right, pretty much everything I'm going to need access to is behind this top panel. And I see it's missing a couple of screws. All right, this is the burner switch that is in question. The red and the black wires up here are the 240 volt connection coming in. This is pretty much always live when the stove is plugged in. These two brown ones are the burner element. So this has a bimetallic strip inside it that um, when it gets too hot it breaks contact. So it'll go back and forth in, with contact to keep the burner warm and the higher the temperature the closer they're pushed together. Uh, it's kind of a neat, fairly inexpensive mechanical way of doing something that uh, is prone to only mechanical failure because there's only mechanical parts inside it. But uh, this purple wire is the indicator that the power is on to the burner, or the power is, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a power indicator. So in theory, all right, 
just to look at this. If I set these two on, you notice I'm still, I have no, uh, no resistance. It's, I mean, it's, it's infinite resistance. It's off the scale. So now when I turn this on, if this was working, this should connect to the burner and I should see something like 27 ohms. So this switch is not supplying any power to the burner. Now, is it to the power switch? Again, no. So this switch is defective. Uh, it just needs to be replaced. I think it's it's not a super expensive part. It's in the double digits, uh, probably less than fifty bucks. But it is definitely the switch because if I go here and go across the burner element, you can see twenty one point eight ohms, and that is a pretty good reading for a, an electric stove burner element. Okay, this is just to show you what it looks like when burner actually works. So we've got the 220 volt in across this burner. Now this is, this is all unplugged right now. But when I turn this burner on, you can see that the resistance goes, this one goes to 44. It's a smaller burner, uh, which is eh, just about what it's supposed to be. And when I turn it off, it goes to infinite again. That's exactly what it's supposed to do, where this one, when I turn it on, there is nothing. And I guess you can't see that, can you? That's just verifying that it is the switch that is broken. All right, this is the oven temperature sensor and it comes apart fairly easily. Uh, now there are two wires in here and this has a resistance that changes with temperature. As the temperature gets higher, the resistance goes up. That feeds into the control board and regulates whether or not the oven should be on or off. There are some relays on the control board that indicate that it should be, you know, it should be turned on or turned off. Unfortunately, uh, this has some very tiny holes in it for these two very tiny pins. So I'm going to have to get a couple of short wires to put in there to get a good resistance reading. All right, I have these uh, two little wires that I snipped off of a piece of uh, Cat5e that I happen to have up here since I was running network. Oh, well, that's not very good, is it? <clears throat> right, it's not the most elegant solution, but it is working. Now, this is a thermo probe that is, it's a thermal resistive probe. What happens is, as the temperature increases, the resistance increases, this feeds into the control board, and the control board can figure out what temperature the oven is at, or what it thinks it's at. Now, at room temperature, this should be reading about 1.8 K ohms, and this one is you know, stabilizing at a little over 1 K. Now, I did take this out of the oven and test it directly by heating it up to about 400 degrees, and it got up to 1.5 K, just a little less than 1.5 K, and it never got any hotter than that, or, or it never got any higher than that. And that is way too low for the way that these are supposed to read. So uh, it is getting up to a point and then stopping, which is exactly the behavior that the oven is showing. Uh, it only goes to a certain temperature and never gets beyond that. So again, this is the subject, or this is the suspect piece that needs to be replaced. So, we know what's wrong with the stove. 
and well the stove and the oven uh, right now I am waiting for uh, some paperwork to go through at the gas company uh, power of attorney paperwork so that I can access the accounts in you know so I can get status updates and things like that they they have to verify that I am who I say I am and that I have access to the account so it's gonna be a few days so probably sometime next week uh, I'll have uh, somebody out to take a look at it now the first guy who was here didn't do anything all right he he didn't look at the switch he said it wasn't the switch he said it was a transformer there is no transformer and he said the oven works fine yeah I know the oven doesn't work fine and I know that the switch is broken I'm not going to tell them any of this I'm just going to have them diagnose and fix it and see how competent the service guy is because that's some real shit all right till next time see you guys